we want to represent the function f of x equals 3x divided by the quantity 4 plus x as a power series in this form here. Then we want to compute the first few coefficients of the power series, then find the radius of convergence. We'll do this using what we know about infinite geometric series given here below, where if we have an infinite geometric series in this form here, notice a is the first term of the series, and r would be the common ratio, and this series converges if the absolute value of r is less than one, and it converges to, or the infinite sum would be equal to a divided by the quantity one minus r. So because our function f of x resembles the formula for this infinite sum, we can use this to help us find the power series. But looking at this formula here, a would actually be a constant, and notice how we have an extra factor of x in the numerator. So if we're given the function f of x equals three x divided by the quantity four plus x, to help it fit this form here, let's factor out the x from the numerator and write this as x times, we'd have three, and our denominator needs to be a difference, not a sum, so let's write four plus x as four minus negative x. Now we're getting close for this to fit the form, but notice how the denominator must be one minus r, and right now we have a four here. We need this four to be a one, and therefore we'll divide the numerator and denominator by four to make it fit the form. So this would give us x times, we'd have three divided by a four, that's three-fourths, divided by well, four divided by four is equal to one, which is why we divided the numerator and denominator by four. And then we have minus, we'd have negative x divided by four, or just negative x over four. So notice in this form, we should be able to recognize that a is equal to three-fourths, and r, the common ratio, is equal to negative x divided by four. And therefore, we can say our function f of x is equal to, don't forget about this extra factor of x, so we have x times the summation from n equals zero to infinity of a, which we now know is three-fourths, times r raised to the power of n, which would be negative x divided by four raised to the power of n. Now let's change the form of this. Let's write this as the summation from n equals zero to infinity of we have this factor of three, and then for negative x raised to the power of n, let's factor out our negative one to the nth, leaving us with x to the power of n. But if we bring in this factor of x, we'd have one more factor of x, so we can write this as x raised to the power of n plus one. And looking at the denominator, we have four to the nth times another factor of four, so we have four raised to the power of n plus one as well. Now notice we have both x and four raised to the power of n plus one. So let's simplify this one more time. Let's write this as the summation from n equals zero to infinity of three times negative one to the nth times we'd have x divided by four raised to the power of n plus one. And now let's find the first several terms to find our coefficients c sub zero through c sub four. c sub zero represents the coefficient of the degree zero term or the constant term. c sub one represents the coefficient of the degree one term all the way through to c sub four, where c sub four represents the coefficient of the degree four term. So notice in this case, when n equals zero, the first term in the series would be three times negative one to the zero times x over four to the first power. So we'd have three times x over four to the first. Next, when n is one, notice how the term would be negative. So we'll have minus three times x over four to the second. Notice when n is two, the term would be positive. So we have plus three times x over four to the third. Notice how this term is degree three, so this next term will be the last term to find the coefficient c sub four. 
So when n is three, notice how the term would be negative because we have negative one to the third. So we'll have minus three times x divided by four raised to the three plus one or fourth power. So notice how this was the term when n was zero. This was the term when n is one. This is the term when n equals two. This was the term when n equals three. So let's go ahead and simplify these terms. So here we'd have three-fourths x, and then we have minus three times x over four squared. That would be three-sixteenths x squared. Notice how we have sixteen in the denominator because we have four squared in the denominator. Then we'd have plus three times x over four to the third. That would be three over four to the third. That's going to be sixty-four x to the third. And then we have minus three times x over four to the fourth. That'd be minus three over four to the fourth. That's 256 x to the fourth, and so on. Now let's find the coefficients. We need to be careful though. C sub zero represents the coefficient of the degree zero term or the constant term. Notice how there is no constant term in the terms of the power series. So C sub zero is zero. C sub one represents the coefficient of the degree one term, which is three-fourths. C sub two would be negative three-sixteenths. C sub three, the coefficient of the degree three term would be three-sixty-fourths. And C sub four would be negative three over 256. So we do need to be careful here. Again, C sub zero, represents the coefficient of the degree zero term or the constant term. So if terms are missing, some of these coefficients may be zero. And now we need to find the radius of convergence. Remember this power series converges when the absolute value of r is less than one. In our case, r is equal to negative x divided by four. So the power series converges when the absolute value of negative x divided by four is less than one. We can think of this as negative one-fourth x, and since the absolute value of negative one-fourth is positive one-fourth, we can write this as one-fourth times the absolute value of x is less than one. If we multiply both sides by four, this would give us the absolute value of x is less than four. And since the absolute value of x must be less than four, this tells us the radius of convergence is four. Since the absolute value of x must be less than four, x must be less than four units from zero in order for this power series to converge. If we did want to determine the interval of convergence, notice how we'd have to solve this for x. We would have x is less than four and x is greater than negative four, which would be the open interval from negative four to positive four. Notice how the interval is centered at zero, and we do have a radius of four, which we can determine when we have the absolute value of x is less than four. Let's take a look at the graph of our function f of x, as well as the graph of the polynomial function given by these first four terms of the power series. The original function is graphed here in blue, and the first four terms of our power series, called the Maclaurin power series, since it is centered at zero, notice is a nice representation of the function around x equals zero, if we included more terms in the power series, it'd be a better approximation. And remember, the power series would converge on the open interval from negative four to positive four. I hope you found this helpful.